This video is on the Tiger PID VOC detector from Einstein's. We are doing two videos. The first one is on the operation of the instrument and the buttons, how to use it. And the second one is on the software uh, to download and just make a report. So power it on. When it switches on, it does a lamp check. It does uh, zeroing while it's busy. The instrument has got a audible alarm, as you heard now, visual lights, and then also it vibrates as well if you've switched it on. When it's completed the setup and check, it will go to the home screen. Our home screen here is left hand button is our battery status. We've got a backlight which is on, our alarm sounder is on, and our data logging button, our icon on the right hand side shows that there is some data already saved on the instrument. Bottom left and right is our hotkey buttons, which are operated through the A and B button. And in our center line, we've got our concentration and what gas that's being detected at present. This is isobutylene, it's in parts per million, although this instrument is a PPB model. So the most important button first to start off with would be our information button or I button, which is going to give us a summary of the instrument and how it's been configured. So currently it's set to isobutylene with a response factor of one and an upper and a lower alarm limit. We scroll down, we've got a 10.6 lamp. We've got a calibration that was done on the factory on the 25th of October. If you now did your own bump test or custom calibration, the state whether the man is would overwrite the factory calibration. We never advise that this gets fiddled with. We did rather use the factory calibration and get it annually calibrated at iron sites. The runtime is how long it's been operating since it was manufactured. Down arrow is just the, the information regarding the calibration, the span, um, serial number, battery status, and then this um, screen shows us that we've got so much space left to data log. When the last data logging, uh, sorry, when the last gas table was downloaded, it does get reviewed every now and again, and when you connect to your PC, it will advise you that there's a new gas table and ask if you want to upload it to the instrument, it is advisable to do that to stay up to date. Then our date and time, and then the last screen is the setup for this ordered customer's unit. So it, the Tiger comes in various versions. This one has got a, can, a manual key press and multi-log, which makes it a, a full data logging unit, and it's a PPB model, so it is more sensitive. And if we down screen again, it takes us back to the first screen in the hotkey. So let's escape. Now our settings button on the right, this is gonna be our sound, our light, our time settings. It's also gonna give us our alarm settings. This is quite important because in isobutylene, the preset high and low alarm levels are set, but for other gases, there are no high and low alarm level set, you would then customize this here. So for example, you would enter and then you would up arrow to change your upper or lower limit. If you don't set limits, it's not going to alarm and it's not going to, um, it's not going to give you audible or visual alarm. The next button is your PPM. In this specific model, again, because it's a PPB version, it's got different units of measure to select between. And the last button is our um, lamp choice, which this unit is using a 10.6 lamp. None of that does not get changed. Just escape, go down to the next hotkey. Left hand side, we've got our gas types. So the Tiger has over 700 gases on board. So if you select between different gases, if you want to go to a specific gas, it would give you the concentration of that gas. You go down to the letter and you just scroll until you find the gas that you want. And then the respective response factor will be loaded already on the instrument for that specific gas. I'm just going to go back to isobutylene. I'm 
we still are on it. Um, this is also a useful function for, you can use, if you don't know what volatile organic compound you're detecting, you can leave it on isobutylene or you can select TVOCs, which is going to give you a total volatile organic compounds, also with a response factor of one. But if you didn't know what gas you were, you were detecting, but you had a suspicion they were, say, benzene present or ethanol present, for example, you would then go to benzene or ethanol and you would select it so that it shows ethanol or benzene on your screen, and you would then be measuring the concentration of that specific gas. It's not able to identify what gases are present, but if you know more or less what gases will be within the mix, you can select between it and it will measure accordingly. Then you've got your zeroing, which is your absolute and your relative. The top icon is your absolute zero, which has been done at the factory. If you did a custom calibration, then this would be where you would do your zeroing. It doesn't take it because it has been cal calibrated already and zeroed at the factory. But our relative zeroing is possible because it's going to zero in relative environment or in the ambient air and it will it will drift so that is possible our next hot key is our rolling average so it will record over a period of 10 seconds and after the 10 seconds it's going to select it's going to give us a tick on what the highest or what the average is sorry so let's just escape then go back So it's, it will then, over the 10 second period, or at the, at the end of the 10 seconds, it will, it will tick it and it will start to log it. On the right hand side, we've got peak, which is our highest level present. Both the average and the peak values are measurable when they are open on the screen like now. So our peak would obviously be our highest value detected at that time and it will store it on screen. So that's it's good that this has happened because now you can actually see the, the lights and you can also see the alarm bell. In order to go out of that, I pressed escape down arrow that's our data logging function so like I mentioned before this has got manual key press and it's got multi-log so manual key press would be the left hand hot key in order to save the value you just manually key press you just press the A button and it saves it if you want to set up the multi-log it asks you do you want to do it yes you want to do it by pressing enter and it will give you a tick to say it's now been selected now, automatically, every second, it's going to flash on the screen because it's data logging the values. Our next two hotkeys are our zones and calibration. Our zones are, they are 128. It's a useful function, especially for different areas where you need to take readings on the same day or within the same couple of hours etc so you can identify you can label these areas or zones as they call them and then the data log per zone or per area this is done from the software which you then upload to the piece to the instrument we will look at that in the second video in the calibration this hot key I suggest to be removed and hidden because um, we recommend that customers don't interfere with the setting. This is a factory calibrated instrument. You can do a manual or custom calibration, but we don't recommend it because it can give faulty readings if it's not done properly. So this specific hotkey, this showing that it's been factory calibrated. And then our last two hotkeys is our sleep mode and our stealth mode. So our sleep mode will just make the instrument go to sleep so just hold the button in until it counts down and it will go to sleep. Um, and then it's, it's a slightly shorter time, so it, it, it will wake up and it will do a lamp check again when it wakes up. So it's not as long as from, from powering on, but it's, it is a function to have. So just one, press one button to wake it up again. And then the stealth mode is 
a good function again to have because this is useful for people that are doing assessments or investigations where a client is going to be present and they don't want the client to see the values or to get upset or concerned. So you would switch the stealth mode on and then when the values are high, it's not going to give you a high alarm or flashing light. So for example, now we've got, I've put the stealth mode on. So now it's alarming, as you can see there. Now previously when I had the ethanol open, it was making the audible and the visual alarm. Now, but because I'm in stealth mode, it's only showed you the, the, the alarm bell. It hasn't given you the LED lights and the, the audible alarm. That can be hidden if you want, if you don't want to use it as well. And then our last two takes us back to the beginning of the hotkeys. I'm just going to escape because it's still alarming. So that is the function of the instrument. Um, just in addition, I was saying about a torch. So to switch the torch on, you just hold the A and the B together and it switches on the torch. And then other than that, um, it's already data logged quite a lot of information. We're going to, in the next video, look at that and do the software.